Good morning. And a little bit more to the downside there. And I guess it just had to reach that level of price support there to the left. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before any kind of true stabilization, even though we had a we had a great long trade uh, yesterday uh, at the bottom early in the morning on the turn. Some of you grabbed a great short trade later in the day. Um, so overall, the intraday trading has been phenomenal. Uh, the areas, some of the areas like the 200 day over here that we kind of, we, I, I did think, you know, between the 200 day and 3000, it would begin to stabilize. Not that there was significant support, uh, but these pivot lows here just got sliced through any on the daily chart as if they weren't there. And that just is in a, you know, an indication of the power of the selling and just supply over overwhelming the demand on the, on the way down. So now that we're at this significant support area, um, you know, there's some, a little bit of buyings come in, but selling still continues. And you know, we'll just look intraday. You can see the start of it here on the hourly chart. And this is how I like to do it. You know, as, as things come down in a climactic way, and this would certainly uh, meet the criteria of climactic, um, once it reaches a level, some sideways price action. And we always, you know, we look at price action as a reflection of emotions, what people are thinking, what their beliefs are. And clearly, you know, this is a picture of fear and the opposite of irrational exuberance. Uh, and so as now as prices have fallen, there's still a tremendous amount of individuals, hedge funds, um, that are holding tremendous losses. And so the memory of that is going to have uh, those individuals looking to pair those losses, which are going to take a long time. Of course, any rallies are gonna get sold into, but when prices fall this far, this fast, it creates what we call a giant price void. Now, what we wanna see to some extent, even for as an intraday trader and the smaller the time frames you go to, the more you see of it, and old levels, um, the more you see of sideways consolidation. So as this is going sideways here on the 15, uh, if this began to hold here and you could see possibly what would begin to form as a head and shoulders bottom, right? You got a little poke there or what we call a shakeout. If this could come back up again, we'd be looking to go long. Now, that isn't a very big bottom. It's actually minuscule in relation to this drop. So, you know, as it comes up, and let's just say it does get up into this area here, um, you know, and even if it hits there, it'll stall. But, you know, you sell out, take profits. Point what I want to make here is that over time, of going sideways, and I'm not drawing into the daily chart to show that it's going to the daily chart, but the concept is that it gets away, time moves it away from these reference points, making them less potent as reference points. Uh, it's the same thing if we're looking at a daily chart and looking at uh, this drop. Theoretically, it would take weeks to get away from this area to have a truly meaningful move to the upside. So uh, when prices drop as sharp as they do, uh, if they make a V bottom and start to rise, you could expect for sellers to come in relatively quickly versus going sideways for a period of time, then the moves tend to be larger. All right, let's clean that up and keep going. And look at this, this is a 15% correction in just over a week, incredible. Q's, right, got down to the 200 day, 16%. And this is lined up, in this case, the 200 is lined up with this prior area of support, this pivot low. 
And, you know, as we look at moving averages, we call them visual aids, and we look to the left, right? So are they actually lined up with anything? Or, you know, is it a situation more like this, that if you look to the left, it's really not lined up with anything of any significance? And so at that time, it was, okay, it's a subjective reference point, but institutions are looking at it, uh, and they'll react to it, and they did intraday. But in this case, the lesson is there's nothing to the left because of the, the speed of the advance at this time, whereas the Qs, it aligns perfectly with this area of price support where it went sideways for, well, I guess a few weeks before it, it rallied there. Right. The Dow just sliced through. I mean, but well, these are about the same percentage in correction. Um, now the the Qs, you know, they were showing relative strength, so they didn't have as severe a drop through uh, other support levels. But the Dow last night, you know, this is from overnight trading, uh, down about sixteen percent into this area of support down here. And you know, as this was going up, while we pointed out the fact that sentiment was when I called it at that time nosebleed territory and uh, you know ringing the danger sign with breath deteriorating, I can tell you it did not suggest such a downside violent move in such a short period of time. Historically, yes, corrections happen. You know this and, and my theory, you know everybody's talking about this virus and uh, one of the things I said yesterday was you'd think that they'd, they'd be shoveling dead bodies into holes and everybody be scared to death because this is dropping like everybody is scared to death. yet you know we hear the president and not that I'm saying politicians are what you should base your uh, factual information on, but you know, he's saying, oh, there's 12 people in the country that have been affected and one is kind of really sick. The others are going home. And meanwhile, the stock market's crashing, um, you know, over in China, where this all all started. Um, I said, are they shoveling people into holes? And I'm, I'm saying that because of watching on Netflix this thing about pandemic and what happened 100 years ago. They are, you know, pushing bodies into in, into a hole. Now, I don't think they would be doing that today, but nonetheless, we would be seeing people dying right in front of us with uh, this kind of a, a severe drop. And now these internals are extremely cooked here, uh, which have reached bullish levels. I know that said, it's going to take time to repair some of this damage before uh, we get any kind of meaningful move. And we may not see these old highs even in 2020 because of the way this came down again. So We'll see, it's gonna take time to rebuild here, but the point of looking at the internals is to say historically, these internals have reached such an extreme that the downside at this time is limited. Not to say this is ultimately the low, it would make sense that this is a good low area since it's at a significant area of support. Um, but internals give us guides. Now, you can see this level here, how it was tested all of last year. The real danger here is we do start seeing dead people <laughs> all over. And this thing gets really nasty because there's a void below here. There's nothing to stop it. So I'm not, I'm not predicting that or suggesting that. I'm just pointing out the fact that there is no support below this level. So internals wise, uh, just looking to the left of support wise, the extreme drop that's occurred here, institutions, if institutions don't start stepping up here, um, wow, that's all, you know, this whole thing was a wow, but um, we'll see what ha how this all unfolds today. So far, as you can see, it's just trying to base out here. So we'll see what happens at the open. Uh, Russell, same story, collapse right down to this area of significant support. Uh, and you can see this was underperforming some of the others and it fell real hard, but again, down about right, almost 15%. There we go. Um, at this major support point. And you can see all the support that's over there. 
uh, oil. You know, breaking through that support, going down here to the next support. And so, you know, this is in alignment with, you know, what we talked about with yield curves inverting uh, and possibly that, uh, you know, leading to a recession. So something we'll keep an eye on the, the longer against the most short are still well above inversion. But this is where I was talking about back there at the beginning of the year that between the internals and, and this piece of information, is that there's trouble coming. Not that it suggested this kind of trouble, but the warning signs were there. Now, with oil coming down here, getting low, hey, you know, prices at the gas pumps go down. You know, that has an effect of a positive effects um, but it's going to take time for that to uh, come into play of what those effects will be, All right? Well, that's, I'd like to see that what George has posted for us. It should be an interesting read. I'll give it to those on YouTube here. I'm sure they'd like to look at it as well. Okay. Thank you, George. Uh, bonds are up here, of course. Uh, they had originally laid gap down there last night and things stabilized and now rallied back up again. So continue, this continues to, um, you know, reinforce the bearish part that there could be more downside if bonds are going up. But uh, if this is something to keep an eye on to see if they start to roll over. So uh, if you're thinking about intraday going long, uh, Intraday, if this begins to base out, you can keep an eye on bonds since there are, these institutions are so focused on interest rates and this would begin to uh, turn back down again. And if you don't have those futures, you can just keep an eye on the ETF for uh, interest rates where opposite bond prices, you'll see how far interest rates have come down. So again, the demand for money theoretically, while this is, is bearish, which is saying, there is gonna be little demand for money, all right? So we have to make it cheaper. That's why interest rates go down, right? Besides, you could say people are going to bonds and think it's safer than equities, but as interest rates go down, as it relates to the economy is to say, hey, nobody wants this money. It's cheap, but we don't want it because we're scared to death as to what's gonna be happening here. So at some point, right, interest rates get low enough where it's like, hey, this money's so cheap. Let me go borrow some of that and um, buy a house. Let me do some refinancing. Let me buy some new computers, so on and so forth. So, you know, eventually things get to the point where enough positive things happen that the cycle starts to move in the other direction. Right? Gold, some profit taking here. Uh, you know, I still think this has the potential to get up to, you know, 2000. You know, giant bottom action here. Sorry, I've scrunched it all up with those pivot highs and pivot lows there. But just to show you the old uh, high up in that area. So this, while well, coming in a little bit, still looks like it can go higher. Uh, silver has been a real mess and now it's broken this little support area here. So kind of odd with gold acting so well, but uh, you know, there you have it. it. It broke down here and looks like it has to come down to the next level. Uh, we always look for confirmation and there it is, All right? Transport's crashing through that support. Um, so now this has no support till down here. So the question is, can it kind of build a new area of support? That's the, our concept we call creating support. So what we would need to see happen is this eventually start to move up and jiggle around and, you know, go sideways here above this level. Otherwise, you know, we look for it to continue to go down and that kind of leads to, you know, the transports playing catch up while, you know, the S and P's are down at this significant support level. And, you know, maybe they jiggle down a little bit further, you know, we really don't know. So looking at what I've explained here gives us guides to keep our bias in check. So look, the downside up here, once it broke through this level, uh, it, it certainly opened up, but you know, to fall this far this fast, um, 
I think the majorities are quite surprised other than the, uh, the geniuses that are always there, you know, beforehand. And what else to look at? Uh, today's Friday, zero to expiration day. So well, I don't know if that's correct here. Well, we know that the futures are down here, right? At these pivots, October, September. So let's go back here, down in this area here. So 2750 holding, I think it's a no brainer, Paul. Um, you know, 2750, you know, well, you got 2730, this prior low, but uh, so it's already down here as we always do, right? We look at the futures and we see what they're doing. We wait for some stabilization. So let's assume that they come down to this low here and they rip back up again. Yes, yes, we do it. And then we manage from there, right? So uh, that's about it. I mean, everybody knows all the nastiness that's out there. Um, let's just take a look at here. Volatility index. Let's scrunch this up. I think the first stop was, uh, let me just, oh, we got it a weekly chart down here. And I said this right, earlier this week in the chat room. And, and this is a good spot to keep an eye on today if this selling continues. Be aware that the volatility index, this spike high here, is up there. And, um, you know, that was something that I pointed to earlier in the week. And granted, at the time, it seemed a little bit um, inconceivable that that could be possible. But today, it not only looks possible, it looks probable. Um, so uh, just send an alert up there. Be aware of it. Let the computer keep an eye on it. That clicks off. Maybe the NYSE tick is at a minus 1,200 or 1,500. The put call ratio, right? These guys are buying puts now. You know, just the way they were buying calls at the high, uh, the put call ratio is at 1.3, 1.5. You need to start thinking, at least intraday trading, where is the downside shakeout reversal to buy S&P, right? Spiders, Qs, futures, whatever your pleasure is. Uh, that VIX number, it's around 50 bucks, give or take. It doesn't have to be an exact number, Paul. Um, you know, so this daily chart shows that spike up there, right? You can see my cursor up around 50 bucks. You can set an alert at 48, right? And uh, once it gets up there, get ready, you know? All right, that's it. All yours, Paul. Can you explain how to roll Q spread? I'll have to leave that one for Dan, how to roll a Q spread. I think it's just part of your platform where you... Depending on your platform, it shows you how to do it, but maybe Dan has the time to mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we, I'll go through opens here. We don't have that many, but yeah, yesterday when we got the intraday bounce, uh, we did uh, sell some out of the money uh, put spreads in the queues and, and spiders that expire today. Uh, they're unfortunately way against us right now. And so rolling means we're going to put it all in as one order. That means we're going to buy to close the current one and sell to open next week. And I mean, you know, despite these market internals being cooked, and I said that into the close yesterday, I said, you know, when we cracked, I said, this looks horrible. And now this 15 minute chart, if the market did not close yesterday, this looks like a continuation. So th this, this, I, you know, I've been at this 20 something years too. And wow, I, this is relentless selling. And so I said that the last couple of days that these bars are ugly. And, you know, I think I was putting too much emphasis on those cooked internals and then going to a too small of a time frame. I mean, we entered yesterday, beautifully beautifully and we had open gains look at that made new highs and 
uh, you know, I thought they were so far out of the money. And look at that, from the high is 310. This is crazy. 22 point drop in a couple hours. Um, so anyway, yeah, well, we'll actually I'll give you a, um, a screenshot later. I'm doing nothing now though, in terms of uh, rolling. Definitely want to just relax right now. Uh, see if we can get better prices, um, you know, a bounce. So we have spiders and cues that we'll have to, um, uh, David. Uh, and I, Dan, just sorry to interrupt, but I, in all the time we've been doing this, personally, and you're the option expert, but I think this is one time where rolling makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the instruction um, yesterday. I said, we're not going to have a stop. We're going to roll because I thought, you know, whether the bottom was yesterday and I told myself, all right, even if the low, you know, we'll make another low, but they were, Greg, I sold these things like $10 out of the money yesterday. It was crazy. I know it was crazy. I, I mean, I mean, 15. it's like, you know, lightning hitting twice. It, you know, it, it reminded me of the book when genius fails and they really went beyond, you know, the extremes and got killed on it. Like lightning hit four times. It's an awesome book when genius fails by Lowenstein. And it's about a the, the theoretical of a situation like this, of where things have reached such an extreme that it's even a better trade. And they added, and it's even a better trade. And they added, and you know, it just never stopped. And that was where the fed came in. And it's a great story. It's no, I, I think you're right. I do feel like that. Um, yeah, I hear you. But yeah, so that was that was our intent to roll. I'm in them too. I'm in the, I'm, I'm in these things I gave. I'm in pain. Um, but I just gotta deal with it and you know, using our method of objectivity. But I'll 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 walk you all through it. I'm not gonna leave anyone stranded, don't worry. All right, so we have that. Uh, we have the cues. We were short the um uh, let me see on the cues. Cues. See, we, let's see, where are we? Okay, all right. Um, so, so look at this, Greg. Yesterday, the cues were at, you know, when we entered, let's just eyeball it here, 211. Greg, we're short the 203s for today. So that's eight dollars away, and so yes, we're in pain. You know, it's at one ninety nine now, so we're gonna have to roll those too. And we're gapping. Wow, that's a look at the size of this gap here. It's below. It's below right the two hundred day. <sighs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, David, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I answered you. Yeah, you can still, you can. Um, let's see, the VIX right now twenty four seventy three. Yes, I would. Let, let's, I would, I would sit through it for 30 minutes. Like I'm not going to do a thing on these, these put spreads. And, you know, I trade the put spreads and the indexes and the call spreads on VXX, you know, pretty much in tandem. Let's, let's my recommendation, because if you have to roll something that's, you know, deep in the money, we got to see what, um, you know, the goal is to try to do it at a credit. I'm not at a well, yeah, the goal is a credit, but when the deeper in the money you are, uh, we may not get a credit. And that's what I want to walk through and see what the real numbers are. Uh, all right, what else do we got? EA, we have a call spread, it's gapping down three bucks, so that's good. Ice, ice, we have a Oh, somebody's trying to walk into my condo right here. Um, Greg, give me a second. Someone's trying to walk in here. Um, you just can't keep those girls away from you, Dan.
Wow, that was weird. No, I might have to get my 357 out. Um, all right, ice had an ugly close yesterday, but it, it didn't hit the stop. So we'll use 30 minute low for that. Uh, we have a put spread down here, down here, the 90s, the 90s, 85s. We have Norwegian Cruise Line. Uh, we have the $22.5 puts. I will be looking to add to this. I mean, think about that. It has 20, 20, you know, three weeks to expiration. And that's 12, over $12, $13 away. Uh, or whatever the math is. And that's it. We don't, we don't have many opens. That's just these two um, foot spreads are our biggest problems. I-N-G-N, I have posted as a long. And that looks, that's still, it's holding up great. That's, that's a one, two, three. Um, and that's it. All right, let's go to uh, gappers now. Or if you all have any other questions on anything. Zoom, uh, we had a put spread over here. Some of you are still in it. Uh, it looks it looks amazing, but no no new setup. Yeah, TTD I saw. It's that that's a beautiful fifteen minute chart. Beautiful gap up to resistance. Fairly controlled here, bottoming tail. You're asking, Gango, what about a 292-95305 call spread? Uh, I Let me look at the daily, but that, that's a, for a day trade. If the market holds, that, that's a bullish 15-minute chart. Um, and it's earnings, so I, I would just wait before fading a call spread. Just put it, put it in a five-minute chart. But I don't think you're going to get any juice that far away. It's earnings, so one, once the announcement comes out, that you know they're going to they're going to drop big. Uh, this looks like it's playing catch up as a one of the bio stocks. Same with this. A lot of these, not more whatever Corona stocks, have been the new toys lately. Well, not a toy, but you know what I mean. Going ballistic. 5150 gap and down five bucks. There's there's nothing to do with it. Wow, look at palladium's been on fire along with gold. Gapping down to 250 though. That's a bearish, very bearish gap. That could be a call spread. I, I've never sold options on palladium, so I, I don't I don't know if they're liquid or not. Mr. Big is getting uh, much smaller today. Uh, gapping the fifth. Oh, look at that. You got to go to a monthly chart. Um, you know, we'll keep it on our list. Let's see if it does anything. There's our NCL. We're already in. Workday had earnings. No pattern. There's the TTD. Postage at earnings, no pattern. I heart earnings, no pattern. Echo Bravo down, no pattern. Dell 4080. Uh, you know, just another one that's gotten shellacked. You know, it's damaged. I don't, I don't know what to do with these things. Baidu 115, gap in here to the 200. Autodesk, uh, 176, that, that, you know, might continue down to the 200. AMC gapping up, but no pattern, AAOI. Uh, that's in pain, you know, it's near weekly support, but nothing to do with it. Nictor looks lower. My lens extended, you know, let's see if it can reverse here at weekly support. 
MTZ, no pattern, EIX, more pain. That was a utility stock. That's Mr. Big we talked about beyond. Oh, Greg, your upside, your upside alarm is not going to trigger anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, that's a nasty gap. Alex TS. I'm long ES, but ready to kill it at any moment. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw the pop there. Yeah, it's, you know, pre-market climactic. Let's go to a two minute. Yeah, let, I mean, this is, these are rare events, folks. So let's, um, let's, let's, let's focus on it instead of, you know, looking at all these gappers that I'm sure are garbage. 